my name is Kelly. I am a full-time artist. I've also been teaching online now for 20 years and my focus is basically watercolor. I just started this Patreon account in May 2023. I am really excited to be able to just share some stuff with you without it being really expensive. <laughs> but I'd love to be able to bring on new beginners for watercolor. And I just get so excited for you guys, especially when you start painting and you realize what you can accomplish. But I wanted to share with you guys for $5 a month, you can help support me and my art. You also get a full tutorial each month and those are gonna be without any ads. They will also have my full voiceover and most of them will be in real time. So you'll be able to follow along, paint along with me. Also get 15% off if there are any new merchandise or cards or art that you'd like to purchase from my Etsy shop. I have original over there as well and I'll also give you a quick shout out in my YouTube videos just thank you for the support in my patreon channel so I just wanted to share a quick freebie with you just so you can have an idea of what my membership is all about and what benefits um, that you get from being a part of it so again thank you so much for considering being a part of my patreon membership and I am so looking forward to painting with you so what you'll see in my Patreon membership is going to be lots of seascapes, lots of landscapes, trees, rocks, islands, anything ocean related. Um, those are my favorite things to do. But I also do animals. I do birds. I do um, still life. I mean, I could, you know, anything you want to do, we can do. So I will probably be doing lots of polls in here as well just to see what type of things that you would like to um, to try for, for watercolors. So you can see I am starting out with those little five by seven and I do a lot of these little five by sevens. They're Strathmore watercolor cards. They are wonderful for practicing and it's just an easy way and an inexpensive way for you to try some watercolors without feeling nervous about using your expensive paper. But I will tell you, get yourself some expensive paper because it is such a big difference if you can find some 100% cotton paper. Arches is the ones that I use the most, um, but there are a lot of good quality 100% cotton paper. So you can see I'm starting with this wave look, and this was my intention for this piece initially. I did a light wash of some cobalt blue on the top and then used a little bit of in a yellow ochre maybe mixed with a little touch of brown in there and I'm leaving that wet and wet. I've got the white area in the middle. It was more of my splash for my wave. And now I'm using my little dagger brush. This is a quarter inch dagger brush. So it's really loose. I'm holding it way up near the, the middle part of the brush. So I don't have a lot of control. It's very loose and light. And I'm just flicking the blue here and there. This is an ultramarine, a little bit darker than that lighter blue that we had initially. And I'm just creating in some darker areas where in between where that wave might have been splashing. So I want a couple different colors of blue in here. And then I'm just trying to get like a little curve of a wave going. So initially this painting was going to be a wave. And then I decided I, I just love the abstract and the looseness of it. So I really just kind of got just into it. I was having fun with it and it wasn't what I had initially intended on doing. And I love that about watercolor because you can really have fun and just experiment and play because sometimes things will create right in front of your eyes on the paper, which is really a fun thing about watercolors. So I've got my wave in here, a little bit darker blue. I'm doing a little bit of splattering now. And I'm just splattering with some clean water and you can see I'm getting a little bit of texture now in that blue area. So I'm kind of dancing my brush around. Let's, let's soften a little bit more of this. I don't particularly care for those strong lines in there. So I'm going to soften that by just taking my brush and moving it around. It's still all wet. Going back in with a little bit more darker value. Just kind of coming in, just in, hitting it in here and there. Not, not everywhere, but I want to have a little bit of dark and a little bit of light. Trying to get that shape of a wave, kind of that little bit of a curve that we have. Going into that sandy area a little bit, just again, just coming down a little bit where it looks like it's almost wet. You know, when sand is wet, it's a little bit darker. I gotta be careful not to mix them too much because they are wet. That kind of a brown gold color and the blue can create or cast a little bit of a green tone. 
So I did a little splattering of some water just to create a little bit of texture in there. And now I'm grabbing some white gouache and I'm using my dagger brush because that allows me to be extremely loose. You can see that I'm just kind of squiggling this brush back and forth and letting it, you know, kind of take off where it wants to go, skipping some areas and just being very loose, kind of dancing my brush around. I'm gonna do a little bit more splatter with a white. Again, it's a wave so we can have some splash. Try not to go overboard too much with my splattering. Again, I'm just tapping the top of the brush or the back area of the brush and just allowing some of that paint to fall down. Now, if you've never used white gouache before, it is more of an opaque watercolor. So it's great for adding white back in where you may have lost white in your watercolors. Now I'm doing a little bit of squiggles again, just having fun, really energetic motions here and be being very loose, little swirls and squiggles. So that wave is just kind of crashing, the splash is happening, full of energy. We'll add even a little bit more down in here. Not too much because again, most of that splash is going to be near the top. But just like if there were little squiggles in your water, you know, where the waves are kind of rolling in. And since I'm adding water to the gouache, just a little bit, I know that some of this is going to lighten up a little bit. Because when you add water to gouache, it almost becomes a little bit more transparent. The more water you have, the more transparent it becomes. But keep in mind though, with gouache, you do get more of a chalky residue. It's um, not as transparent as watercolor is. So sometimes you can see it, especially if you use gouache in a real heavy way, you'll be able to see that. So I'm going to add in a little bit more of those darker tones in the water again. And you can even mix up like a bit of blue with a little bit of raw umber or bird sienna. I need to darken it up a little bit more. I get just want some some low lights and some highlights. You just want those different colors or those different tones of blues in your water. All right, I'm going to put that down for now, and I think I'm going to grab a little bit of that dark brown. I'm going to cover up the top area and just do a little bit of splattering. And so we have some sand down here, a little bit more texture. And then maybe add a little bit of black gouache to splatter. Just again, another darker value in there. Try not to overdo it too much, but it looks like a little bit of sand down there. And then if you want, you can also take your paints like two little chopsticks. So I've got some white on here. I'm just going to go ahead and splatter a little bit more across the wave. Yeah, and just give me a little bit more energy in there. And now I'm going to have decided I was going to initially just leave this as a wave, but I decided I'm going to put a seagull kind of just skimming across the water. And I'm calling this one surfs up. He's just kind of, I've been in, in North Carolina and they, I was watching not the seagulls so much, but the pelicans and they, it's so cool how they just would glide over the waves. So this guy's kind of coming straight at us. So the best way to describe this little guy as you can see, I've got a little upside down V kind of elongated, and I've got this little egg shape here. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side with its little wing. So he is in flight, and it's looking like a little, I want to say like a little spider <laughs> at this point. So I'm gonna extend that body out just a little bit more. He's gonna be in flight. We'll give him a little bit of a tail here. I'm using the white gouache for this. I know this is going to dry a little bit. It's going to become a little bit more transparent, but it's okay because we're going to add some grays and some blacks in here as well. So that's our basic shape. It's not too, too tough. So now we're going to go into the black, which I've already got some white gouache here. So just the two of those together is going to make a nice light gray area. And the gouache is still wet. So I'm going to go on the underneath and it don't have, even have to worry about that blue in there. Let's just go right over that. We create a nice little shadow underneath the wing and then a little bit on his belly underneath so he's uh 
the underneath of him is in shadow. That's against the wave on the underneath and the top is getting all the light on the top of his head here. All right, and I can see that it's still pretty transparent underneath his wings there. I can still see some of the white gouache and the blue. So let's mix up a little bit more black here, go a little bit darker. And because that's reactivating here, uh, as I'm taking my brush and just lightly creating a little bit of feather te techniques underneath, so it's not all straight. But that paint is now reactivating a little bit underneath that white, white gouache, so uh, it's softening that a little bit more. And again, just kind of going over that shadow area on the underneath of his belly. And we have a nice basic shape. It was really easy to do by just creating those few little shapes. So now I've got my little detail brush, a little yellow in here, and let's create just a little V for a beak in the center. So I'm gonna use that script brush for this. And remember, things can always get bigger, but you can't make them smaller when you're painting these. So just do it really carefully. And uh, you can see I'm just doing a couple little marks at a time, and it's gradually getting a little bit bigger as I go along. And now I'm going to go into a little bit of black. I think I'm going to be good for that. We'll create a couple little eyes, just a couple little dots, one on each side of that beak. And you'll notice over here on the right, I've got my paper towel and I'm just um, taking my brush and just putting it on the paper towel just to absorb any excess because again, you don't want them to drip with uh, too much water because there's just two little tiny little pepper dots there. And now I'm going to go in and just create again, just a few more of those little brush strokes for the feathers. Again, just a couple on the edge. You're not going to see all of these. It's just You just need a few of them for a little detail. Not a whole, whole lot. And then I probably could, I could have not done this. Like I like the way it looks right now, but I did go back in with a little bit more of the white. Adding a little bit more to the tail and then just brightening it up a little bit on top of his head here. It has a little bit of a gray tone to it. And a couple little dots on the underneath of the belly again. Just those few little details. You don't need a lot, but it just gives it again a, another couple little spots of color in there. And then this is his little tail or it could be his feet. Again, taking that black and just bringing it up into those feathers a little bit more. And you can see how slow I am with this. I'm just being, doing it very carefully, trying to follow that little curve. And again, you're gonna have a little bit of a shadow on the underneath of his wings. The top is where the highlight's gonna be, where the sun's hitting it, and the underneath is where all your dark feathers are gonna be. So I hope this little seagull inspired you to grab your paints, get ready to come and paint some more with me. I would love to see you join my membership. Your support means everything to me. Remember, it starts at only $5 and you can cancel at any time. So I am looking forward to painting along with you. Have a great one.